Monster Hunter World is the ninth installment of the long-running Monster Hunter video game series, and the first American game to be released on a console. It's a game where you take down giant monsters, either alone or with friends, and you take the resources carved off the monsters, make armor out of them, and fight bigger, badder monsters while wearing their skin. On paper, it's a fun action game with multiplayer connectivity, but in reality, it has a lot in common with MMORPGs like World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy XIV. You gather, you craft, you kill, you show off to your friends, you complete weekly events, and the game gets regular free DLC support. Support, and you quickly realize that your virtual exploits in this beautiful beast-infested battleground is topping your list of personal needs, right above personal hygiene and long-term health. The predictions I made in the previous Monster Hunter World video I made were pretty much right on the money. I've been playing the game obsessively since it came out on January 26, and even as of the time of this video's publication, I still haven't technically finished the game. But if I wait to grind all the way to Hunter Rank 100 and beyond, the game will be completely irrelevant at that point, so I'm just making the video now. I beat the main story, and I'm working on eventually getting to Rank 100, but for now I can say I've experienced all the current main story content. To briefly reiterate what I said in my other Monster Hunter video, the series has been bogged down by underwhelming controls and small portable console screens, with the handheld buttons being technically remedied by a technique known as the claw. People who played the series extensively knew the handicaps of the series, but they endured it simply because the gameplay and atmospheric details were too good to pass up. Since the obnoxiously uncomfortable controller barrier is now a thing of the past, Monster Hunter gets a chance to shine and appeal to more mainstream conventional gamers that understandably can't be bothered to carry around a bulky PSP or 3DS and play an arthritis-inducing game in the rare event that some of their local friends want to play. Now you just add people to your friends list, invite them to your game, and talk to them over either Discord or PlayStation party chat, and as long as you're all connected to the same session, you can come and go as you please in a full squad of 16 people max. Or if you don't have any friends, you can just go into a mission and fire an SOS flare to invite random Japanese players who are usually pretty reliable. The world is just as vibrant and bustling as ever, with careful consideration given to destructive elements, weather, and overall graphical fidelity. There's a variety of wildlife that can be caught with your slinger's net ammo and kept as pets in your room back home. You start off with this small little basement area with crates and floorboards, and you can have one pet. Then you upgrade to a bigger room that lets you place even more pets and has an awesome window aquarium. And finally, you unlock your private suite where you not only have a huge amount of real estate, but you can put a metric fuck ton of pets in your living space. And you also have two cats playing the harp for you non-stop. And that's pretty great. There's a little pig you can pet and he'll love you. You can change his outfit and make him look even cuter than mankind could ever have imagined. And when you bring your cat with you on a mission, he can make friends with the other cat tribes that'll help you snare monsters to give you an advantage in battle. When you're done, the cats will wish you luck on your adventures. In cat tongue, of course. And when you're trying to cross bodies of water, your cat will pull out a little inflatable boat to keep up with you. If I tried to list off every single thing that made Monster Hunter World charm my fucking pants off, then we'd be here for at least two more hours. But those are the main things that occurred to me that helped sell Monster Hunter as more than just a fun action game, but a breathing world that's happy to have you playing it and encouraging you every step of the way. The single player fights are great, the cutscenes look stellar, and while playing on my PS4 Pro, it literally looks like a medium high-end computer game, which means the PC version is going to be amazing with plenty of mods to make it even prettier. There's also the option to play with no heads-up display, meaning you can see the game through a clear lens and truly appreciate how deep and sprawling the maps are. Obviously this is a problem once you consider that no HUD means no awareness of your current health, but when you're immersed in a fantastical world with endless possibilities, dying is hardly something to be concerned with. There aren't too many areas, just five maps. But there's so much stuff packed in each corner that just five maps feels like slander. There's a big spiraling forest, a rocky, muddy, cavernous desert, a gorgeous coral mountain, pestilent, acidic badlands, a giant ravine in which you fight a huge, towering mountain, and a crystalline, pure alcove tucked away at the ends of the world, complete with a volcanic underground that make for some pretty spectacular looking fights. Shit, most every fight I have with any enemy is bound to have some sort of visual spectacle attached to it, especially with the end game Elder Dragons, with the Kushala Daora being the only fight that had so many visual effects it managed to drop quite a lot of frames consistently across multiple battles. On the topic of the frame rate, if you already have a PS4 or Xbox One, you can play Monster Hunter World just fine, although the frame rate and loading times will be a bit jumbly. But if you don't have a PS4 Pro or Xbox One X and we're planning on getting one, your Monster Hunter World experience will be a lot smoother with HDR and 4K support, as well as faster loading overall. While I understand that Ryozo Sujimoto and his development team need more time to ensure that the internally developed PC version is up to their standards. It's unfortunate that such an amazing game had to come out at a time when the original hardware is nearing obsolescence. 
It's worth mentioning that while the Monster Hunter series has been gradually getting more cinematically oriented since 4 Ultimate on the 3DS, this is the first game to place a heavy emphasis on cinematics and storytelling. As many other YouTubers have pointed out, the story is serviceable enough to carry the events of the game in a way that make you feel like you're helping out some of the more defenseless villagers to keep them safe and their work unobstructed. But if you're expecting any sort of storytelling mastery along the lines of Metal Gear Solid or Nier Automata, definitely don't get your hopes up. Where everything really shines is the gameplay. And boy oh boy is it shiny enough to literally sear my retinas and ruin any hopes of enjoying future, comparatively unpolished video games from other studios. There are 14 weapon classes, with each class being well balanced and incredibly fun to play, changing the dynamic of the game substantially and allowing you and your friends to strategize and use different approaches for different enemies. And you're allowed to change weapons anytime, including in the middle of a mission, which encouraged me more than ever to try out every class at least once to figure out what I enjoyed playing the most. You can play as close range blade classes like Sword and Shield, Great Sword, Lance, Dual Blades, or you can play the Insect Glaive, which is all about bouncing around with mid-air dashes. You can use a hammer and just bludgeon the absolute shit out of everything. You can play the ranged heavy bow gun that lets you fire a wide variety of super powerful bullets, or you can use a less intensive light bow gun if you just want to have more mobility. You can even play with a hunting horn that can buff your teammates and make fights significantly tilted to your advantage, if you're that people pleaser that everyone always enjoys inviting to their parties. It was crazy to main the switch axe throughout the majority of the low rank story quests, only to switch to sword and shield in the high rank quests and feel like I'm playing an entirely new game with an emphasis on small, cautious attacks instead of giant, risky, explosive stabs that usually get punished and cause your teammates to have a seizure at just how much of a scrub you are. I played Monster Hunter Freedom 2 casually until Monster Hunter Try on the Wii, which I played religiously in college. And ever since then, I've always loved the series, but didn't really have enough mutually interested friends with which to play. So my enjoyment of the then most recent title was always stifled in a major way. It's definitely true that the games have been improving exponentially since then. In, with the gradual tweaks and updates making the games progressively more accessible and gratifying to play. This couldn't be more true in the case of Monster Hunter World, in which little changes like auto-crafting to save yourself time, being able to research enemies to the point where they'll display a little blinking skull icon and faster pulse to indicate they're ready to be captured, having a wish list to prompt you when you have all the parts necessary to craft a weapon so you don't have to keep visiting the blacksmith to check your progress, as well as larger improvements like areas being one big seamless area to make you laugh at the prospect of the previous games having separately loaded inter connected zones for the sake of memory. All had me nervously sweating in my gradual realization that this game was borderline perfect and that I can never go back to previous titles in the series which had become semi-obsolete in the face of all these immaculate design alterations. The game's popularity is a massive indication that the series has had a wide appeal, but a select few design choices kept casual players at bay. So it's really great to see everyone finally getting what made Monster Hunter so addicting. It's impressive when I go over to my ex-girlfriend's house and I see her fiancé who normally sticks to Destiny 2 and Call of Duty playing Monster Hunter world after I showed him a couple of trailers. Like, this isn't just a hardcore niche thing anymore like the series used to be. It's a series that seems to have mainstream appeal. Apparently dudes that like shooting dudes with guns also like killing monster dudes with pointy dudes. Assuming it's given proper support, I think it'll have the staying power necessary to ensure an equally polished sequel. You know, perfect is really the only word that comes to mind when I think of Monster Hunter World. Like, obviously there are some tiny things that technically prevent it from being perfect, but I'm able to look past that after having struggled through Monster Hunter Freedom Unite 2 on the PSP, so with that perspective in mind, you can understand why I'm giving it a mild pass. At the moment, the end game feels a little barren with the lack of G-rank hunts, but the developers said they plan on releasing more content over time, with the Ryu and Sakura costumes as well as the alloy armor from Horizon Zero Dawn being present in the game's current build, so I'm not really worried for the game's long-term relevance. Capcom doesn't seem to bother the Monster Hunter team, and it sounds like they get to make a lot of executive creative decisions without any major constraints, so I wouldn't be surprised if we got a Monster Hunter World 2 or some sort of free expansion pack for the current game down the road. Monster Hunter World has been a resounding success, and it honestly fills me with so much joy knowing that everybody finally has a chance to experience the bombastic action that was only possible on the 3DS before it. And it's made me so proud to be a Monster Hunter fan in this day and age, to get a true high-definition game on a home console that I can play with a proper traditional controller. World encapsulates everything that makes the series great, from the unbridled realism of the wilderness to the awesome visual flair that the designers put into the armor, all the way to the crazy high-stakes battles with friends that truly feels like you're giving your everything to take down a walking death machine. I might review the series again before it comes out for PC, just to see if the gradual release of DLC maintained my attention, but for now I can absolutely recommend buying Monster Hunter World. It's temporarily alleviated all of my depression and anxiety and given me a chance to catch up and play with all my online voice actor friends and people I've known since high school. I can't remember the last time I've had this much fun playing a video game, and if you're a fan of action games with a good amount of depth and polished combat mechanics, you can't go wrong with this one. I don't really have a proper ending for this, but I really want to go and play more Monster Hunter World, so I'm ending the video. So yeah, just uh, go, go play the game. Alright, bye.